the last part of um, the second class it is a sort of a summarization of the um, concept that we have discussed in the previous section first of all we have to discuss about the problem of critics concerning the postmodernist and uh, deconstructivist architecture what does it mean problem of uh, uh, critics Well, we know that in uh, this course we are not going to touch examples of architecture, uh, illustration of specific cases, uh, building description, typology, uh, language and so on. But we mostly concern critics of architecture. We mostly concern interpretation of architecture. So somehow the example of the building that we illustrate in the previous section, it is just um, a coincidence. It is just a way to express more clearly the philosophy. Once again, this course have the aim to understand the reasons, the deep meaning of the work of the different uh, master in uh, uh, along the 19th and 20th century. The key question is why a certain building has the, that specific solution and what lead the mind of the architect to generate such a specific a project why for example frank gary appear in 1970 1980 and uh, uh, create such kind of strange or unusual building the beauty or the ugliness of a building uh, it doesn't matter for us it's not the key point the, our aim is to give an interpretation of some cases Um, the reason is very simple, because um, the history of architecture is already very mature. And uh, you can find uh, several examples, several repertoire of building in several books. But uh, the problem of uh, many, um, many books, many handbooks uh, on the market is that it is a simply a catalog of solution without any reasons. For example, there is no interpretation of the building, and this is uh, the aim of our course. Now, uh, in this moment, we have to put some uh, interpretation, critical view, in between postmodernist and the deconstruction, and something uh, behind this. What happened after the postmodernist and after the deconstruction? We already uh, illustrate several common points and several differences in between postmodernist and deconstruction arch architecture. We say that uh, there exist some similarities, but also it exists some differences in between the two trends of architecture. For similarities, we repeat once again, both of the trends in architecture Uh, are, can be described as a post-structuralist architecture. It is a sort of uh, philosophy which intends to demolish every possible form of structure, every possible form of uh, universal vision of the world, and everything it is based on weak thought. Uh, what Gianni Vattimo, a very famous philosopher in Italy, described the weak thought. There is no more universal vision. There is no more absolute rule. But everything, it is composed by fragment. This element, this key element, is in common in between postmodernist and deconstructivist architecture. Both of the trends are made by pieces. For example, the postmodernist architecture, it is composed by fragment of the past. It is a simply a, a direct use of classic architecture inside new building, not at all. We know that from the deconstruction uh, philosophy and the construction process of thinking that uh, the postmodernist assert, postmodernist in general, postmodern philosophy, assert that it is not possible to say anything new, but what it is possible to do, it is only quotation, a quotation of something else. When we quote something from the past, this quotation will get new sense, new idea. It is the construction of a original thought. This is a typical of the postmodernist literature, for example. Another very interesting element in the postmodernist is the irony. Exactly because everything it is a quotation, there is no more the heavy weight of the history.
No one is scared about the great philosopher from the past with the, their immense power, energy and greatness in the, in the idea. Everything is a quotation, so everything is destroyed in many, many, many pieces. So, who are scared about the pieces? They are fragments. They are fragments from the past. The past is basically destroyed. And what we can do, it is only to use a puzzle of the past and reuse in a different context. Movie, literature, architecture. In that specific period, in between 1980 and 1990, everything was based in fragment, includes TV show, includes movie, for example. There are remarkable movies at that time, uh, which was made by pieces. Um, everyone uh, uh, know uh, Pulp Fiction, made by Quentin Tarantino. It's definitely a kind of um, gangster story, a great movie, definitely. But if you look at the structures of the movie, it is made by pieces of episode and then blend together. There is no a timeline in the classic movie, in the movie along the 20th century, there is a beginning, a development of a story, a conclusion. Sometimes there is a flashback. Uh, the movie starts at the end and then everything, all the movie, concerns a sort of memoir, memory, a, a flashback, this is the, the technical terms, of all the story. For example, Sunset Boulevard, the great masterpiece of American movie, uh, it is based on this. It starts with the death of the main character and then it is the recall of the previous story. But there is always a timeline. In the movie of Quentin Tarantino, uh, Pulp Fiction, there are different episodes that they are linked to together. These episodes linked together are cut into pieces and then combined almost randomly. Exactly in this case, we can see that the timeline doesn't exist anymore. The movie is composed by pieces. Then finally, thanks of the memory and the intelligence of the audience, the story will become compact again. But definitely the way of narration, it is completely different. And that is typical of the deconstructivist philosophy. There is a very beautiful book, or better, several books, of, the, of a very talented um, writer, Tahar Ben Jeloun, uh, from Morocco, and he used exactly this kind of technique in the narration. Uh, but it is even more complex in that case, because in the book of Tahar Ben Jeloun, the same story, it is described from different perspectives. What does it mean? If we, uh, in several of his books, uh, there is uh, one main story. It doesn't matter which one in this moment. There is uh, the first description, there is a second description, and even a third description, and even the fourth description. And every description is different from each other, but the story is completely the same. Somehow, the logic of the story it is different from every single angle. And what does it mean? It means that there is no one narration. There is an interpretation of fact, always. It is always a, a very famous uh, concept that everything it is not uh, true or wrong. It depends on the interpretation. Well, in the past, that assertion was not valid. There is always an universal truth. If we look, for example, the great book of um, Summa Theologica made by St. Thomas Aquinas, that is completely based on universal truth. If we look at the book uh, uh, Ibn Sina, or the great philosopher from, uh, from Islam, that is the description of one and only one universal truth. But in the contemporary um, philosophy, in the contemporary approach to the reality, that is not true anymore. There is no more universal truth, one tru truth, but everything is described according with different perspective. What it is good for you, it is not good for me. It is completely different. Everyone 
has the possibility to give sense to the universe. Is this uh, correct? We can answer to this question. Because the key point is uh, that is the approach to the reality in the age of the construction. Today, uh, this, this lesson, it is recorded in 2020. The situation is even different. We are talking about an approach of 40 years ago. Now the perspective of the reality is something completely different. But it, during the 1970, 1980, 1990, that was the typical approach. Everything was considered as deconstruction. One interesting point on this element is the approach of Tahar ben Jalun or um, Quentin Tarantino, as two examples that we take just before, has a very interesting antecedent, a very interesting case during the 1960s. And this is unusual. It is a very beautiful short movie, a TV movie, made by the great director Alfred Hitchcock. In this moment, I don't remember exactly the episode, but it was very interesting. The movie described one uh, street accident and, for a certain coincidence, the driver killed uh, one character in the movie. Then he was jailed and then he was condemned to the death penalty because he was guilty. Uh, there are several witnesses of this accident. We can, I don't remember how many, five or six. Everyone has exactly the same story. Everyone has the, the same perception that the driver was guilty and he intentionally killed the woman. And then finish it is that, that is the main story. The court was convinced um, of his um, guilty. And then the, the movie was almost to be finished. But at the very end, there is another person to say, no, it, that is completely wrong. It is not how it works. And uh, he tell a completely different story. And then finally, the driver was released because he was innocent. And the reason of this was only the perspective where the last character have seen the scene. So everyone has described objectively the car accident and in full honesty they declare that this car accident was uh, uh, intentional but the last character have seen exactly the same scene from another perspective and then this is why have seen the truth and the truth is uh, the character was not guilty so finally he was released this is also a very interesting story because uh, um, it appeared with the 20 years in, uh, 20 years in advance, uh, one very um, uh, strange approach that was not usual, was not common during the 60s. Uh, this form of relativity. Somehow the, relativ the relativity, it is still under the ashes during the 20th century because of the approach of Albert Einstein, which become common even the com in the normal life. But this form of anticipation of Alfred Hitchcock become extremely popular in the next uh, 20 or 30 years. So everything is relative. Everything is made by fragment. Many book, many architecture, many art was made by fragment. Uh, even more important is the deconstruction and the postmodernist assert that there is no more unity. On the contrary of the movie of Alfred Hitchcock, which uh, asserts that there is a sort of truth, unity, the final solution, in the case of the deconstruction and in the case of the postmodernist, the assertion is there is no more unity. There is no more final and universal truth. Every interpretation has their own reason and dignity. There is no any preferential uh, truth. Everything is completely the same, on the same level. This is quite unusual, because for the first time there is no... It's a sort of a hyper-democracy, if we want to play with the words. Uh, everything has the right to say anything they want. Uh, today, nowadays, this kind of assertion is not true anymore. For example, there's a very famous sentence in science that said, the science is not democratic. The meaning is only the scientist with the scientific proven data can assert something truth. 
everything which is not based on proof, the gossip, the discussion uh, of the uh, known expert count zero. For example, this is a very different uh, perspective compared with the construction, where everything uh, was under possible interpretation. This is uh, the common point in between a postmodernist and the constructivist. I want to assert once again that the postmodernist and the construction, in many cases, are coincident. They are the same. In architecture, there are radical differences. We say that the postmodernist, it is based on irony. It is based on combination of historical elements, something like the classic order. Uh, the language was based on classic architecture, but deformed, but redesigned exactly because of the quotation and the postmodernist, it is mostly based on quotation. The quotation always give a new meaning on the, uh, on the fragments. The deconstructivist architecture, on the contrary, it is based on extremely aggressivity on forms. In both of the cases, attention, and this is a very tricky point, in both of the cases, there are quotation from the past. The postmodernist architecture intended to quote the classic architecture, the ancient architecture, column, pillars, um, uh, classic order, but reuse in a very strange way, very ironic, sometimes even um, iconoclastic. Uh, the deconstructivist architecture is still a quotation. If you remember the work of, of um, Gunther Domenic, for example, from Austria, what he did is take a typical facade made by international style and the form destroyed. If you remember the, the case of the Funderfabrik made by Kopp Himmelblau in Austria, he take a typical element of the industrial architecture, steel frame, glass, steel pillars, and so on, and the form. So one element which characterizes the deconstructivist architecture, it is the intense aggressivity on forms. There is the intention to destroy the form. And this is not present, for example, in the postmodernist architecture, which is somehow more soft, more accessible to the common taste. The uh, deconstructivist architecture sometimes is uh, even too strong. It, it shows um, a very deep and violent feeling. Uh, Gunther Dominic, for example, is a case. He was an extremely quiet person uh, uh, himself, but the architecture was extremely violent. What happened to the Cop Meblau and even Frank Gehry with all his deformed uh, structures? It seems a sort of uh, cruelty on the, on the material. And the space of the deconstructivist architecture, it is always, always, always extremely intense. The feeling of the users of the deconstructivist architecture it is always very, sometimes, anguishes. Um, there is no calmness in the deconstruction architecture. One point that um, uh, it is definitely uh, very original and even superior in between deconstructivist and postmodernist architecture is that the deconstructivist architecture has a very interesting and very complex sense of the space. And uh, because one of the key lessons in the history of architecture came from Bruno Zevi, the Italian uh, writer, uh, which insists many years on the idea of space, space in architecture, then we have to notice that the space in architecture it is something fundamental. So it is obvious to say that um, uh, the interest for the deconstructivist architecture, it is based on the research on the form, the research on the space, and the research of, on the light. There is also another element quite interesting in the deconstructivist architecture, which is the complexity of the structures. The engineering beside the, the, the constructivist architecture, it is something extremely high, very, very difficult to calculate. 
and it is a sort of uh, challenge for every structural engineer in the world. This is the general frame in between the constructivist and the postmodernist architecture. During the development of the postmodernist and the constructivist architecture, there is something quite um, interesting. It is possible to demonstrate a very, in a very long discussion that we cannot quote in this, uh, in this, uh, in this lesson, that uh, in between the postmodernist architecture and the deconstructivist architecture, finally the deconstructivist architecture becomes um, more powerful in terms of research. The postmodernist was looped around the use and the reuse of uh, historical element with a high sense of irony, a, a very cultivated game of forms and uh, um, details that is perfectly fine. But the deconstruction has one element um, stronger than the postmodernist. And this is not a personal point of view, but it is possible to demonstrate this kind of element. And it concerns the complexity of the geometry. If we compare the cases in between postmodernist architecture and the deconstructivist architecture, it is a clearly, it is evident that the complexity of the space and the complexity of the geometry uh, is much higher in the deconstructivist architecture. Uh, Sometimes the deconstructivist architecture was on the limit of um, the possibility of uh, design. Here we touch a very interesting and uh, difficult point. Imagine that you have to design a deconstructivist architecture. How to do? At the very beginning, the challenge was very high because at the very beginning of the deconstructivist architecture, the end of 70s, beginning of 80s, the computer doesn't exist, or at least it, was, uh, it has a, a very limited use in the design of architecture. Only the big uh, company could own a computer, and a few people can operate the AutoCAD or even the 3D modeling software. At the very beginning, everything was made with uh, the... Um, plane geometry. Uh, so it was extremely difficult to design complex form using the classic method of design, which was based, I uh, remi remind for the young generation, on plan, section and facade. That is the common process of creation of architecture. Definitely the architecture has to be created in the mind of the architect. But then the big problem is how to represent the architecture. The representation was extremely limited. Again, plan, section, facade. So in the case of the postmodernist architecture, no problem, because the postmodernist architecture was basically a classic architecture. There is a very few complexity in terms of space. Everything was very easy to design. An architect with a good skill in sketching can operate everything without any problem. But in the case of the chaos represented in the, uh, the, the constructivist architecture, the representation, the design, the construction drawings was really a big problem. So this is a very interesting point because everything was uh, put under discussion how to represent properly that kind of form, that kind of architecture. And this is the topic of the first part of the next class. I don't want to say too much in this moment, but I only want to remark that the problem was there. In which way such kind of complexity could be represented on paper, on the two-dimensional? And there is no solution. It was simply impossible. So this is why it was necessary to go deeply inside a new form of representation. And this is why it appeared the, the computer-aided design, the AutoCAD. Actually, the AutoCAD appeared for uh, his own reason.
It was a development of the computer science and it was specifically created for mechanical drawings. Uh, also the 3D modeling like um, uh, 3D Max or uh, uh, other uh, very, famous uh, very famous software for the creation of movie, uh, animated movie and so on. They are uh, the product of the market. Uh, software house generated, but immediately, immediately, the some office of architecture, for example, Zahadid, for example, uh, Frank Gehry, or other great company, catch the possibility in around the software. They are going to struggle how to represent the architecture. And the solution was exactly in that software. And then something new appear, because the possibility, the immense possibility um, include in the computer and in the software completely change and open um, a new chapter, completely change the architecture and open a new chapter of the architecture that we are going to describe in the next class. So I want to conclude uh, this is the second class of our lesson with a few statements. Since nine, uh, the second uh, uh, part of 20th century, after the Second World War, we are in front of a big changes. Somehow the modernist was going to die because it was no more uh, close to the society. Something more contradictory, something more controversial appear, which is the postmodernist philosophy and the postmodernist approach to the reality. And then finally, the contradiction, the losses of uh, a universal view, everything appear in a very innovative way. And this is the radical change of the time. No more structures, no more universal true, but everything become the construction no more constructive there is a no more there is no way to recreate the unity everything was made by fragment but again this is not the end of the time this is not the end of the culture as we can imagine the culture simply changed and the radical change the radical innovation was the introduction of the computer with the introduction of the computer, new geometry, new process, new methodology appear.